We are officially 30 pounds heavier over the last five months from now compared to when I ran my last marathon. So in this video, the intent is to cover the keys to a successful bulk. And those include one, embrace the process, two, eating in a caloric surplus, and three, training with enough volume to facilitate progressive overload. So this morning we have five miles on the schedule, five easy miles below my max aerobic cart rate, which my max aerobic cart rate is right around uh, 148 beats per minute. So five easy miles, sitting heavier, obviously, than, than marathon prep. So since I started the build, I've had a lot of people ask me the question, is running harder now that you're heavier? I mean, it's a pretty easy answer, yes. I am by no means running a sub three hour marathon right now. But if you're going to commit to the process, you have to embrace the process. Part of this process, while being in a caloric surplus, is embracing the process of being heavier, holding more body fat. And part of that is that runs are harder. I'm running with close to 30 extra pounds than I was when I crossed the finish line of the Buffalo New York Marathon this past May. And just because it gets harder, just because the effort I'm putting out on these runs is larger, doesn't mean I don't do it. I still do it. This is a hybrid build. It is running and weight training. We are challenging the concept that you can build size, you can put on muscle, you can gain strength, while still running 20 miles a week. But you have to embrace the process. You have to go all in. Beautiful five mile run, 39 minutes, three seconds at a 748 minute per mile pace. Here is the reason you need to be building or balking right now. You know, Jeff Cunningham says, it's better to be consistently good than occasionally great. Think of it as a spring. When you are consistently good over a period of days, weeks, months, maybe even years, that spring gets compressed. And the more consistently good you put in, the more it gets compressed. And then finally, when you're ready to be occasionally great, that spring is so compressed, the results are remarkable. And the only way to compress that spring deeper and deeper and deeper is showing up day after day and putting in the work. The reason you need to be building or balking right now, one, we're about to go into the winter. The winter is the perfect time where you're not outside by the pool, your shirt's not off, you can put on a few more pounds, no one's gonna know, and it's a great time to get strong. And just sitting heavier and running hotter is more comfortable when it's colder outside as opposed to the summer. And if you don't put in that time of building and bulking right now, when you're ready to be occasionally great, when you're ready to cut and tread some pounds, or maybe even step on stage, or transform your physique and body, if you didn't spend that time compressing that spring, you're not gonna get the results you want. Right now is the perfect time to be building or balking. It is a perfect time to be focused on putting on size and strength. Corvette. What is going on? Where's Nick's house? <laughs> I'm like flexing in these fields. Flex. flex it on the fields? Flex it on the fields. <laughs> I command you, grow! I'm mad this looks good. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it opens. 
I command you to grow! Hey, what is some influencer shit right here? <laughs> some influencer stuff. We should come here for our opposing practice. Now I'm sure it's no surprise to you guys that a key to building or bulking is maintaining a caloric surplus. Eating more calories on a daily basis than it is required to maintain your current weight. So my go-to breakfast lately has been five whole eggs, a piece of sourdough with some Kerrygold butter and jelly, and then one banana and a bunch of organic blueberries. So I'm going to eat this meal and then head into the office, but Eating in a caloric surplus is essential. E essential. What I think is most challenging for a lot of people in regards to a caloric surplus is the ability to maintain consistency with a caloric surplus. Not being like one, two, three, four days in a row, but for months maintaining a caloric surplus and a lot of people, myself included, will overestimate how much they're actually eating. And that's why it can be very beneficial to track calories and macronutrients during a bulk or a cut to make sure you're hitting your numbers that you need to in order to reach your goal. So where do we get started? Now we know that one pound equals 3,500 calories. So for example, if you wanna gain one pound a week, you need to be eating in a surplus of 3,500 calories each week. Divide by seven, that is 500 calories a day. So where we start is you find your maintenance calories. What are the daily caloric intake that you can consume that if you maintain that, your weight will not decrease or increase? And when we find our maintenance calories and we wanna gain, say for example, a pound a week, we would have to consume in excess 500 extra calories a day on top of maintenance. Now, if you wanna slow that down, you don't wanna gain a pound a week, maybe you just increase caloric intake by 200, 250 a day, but that's a good starting point. We are on team lunch right now before going into 2023 budget meeting led by CFO Josh Holly, and we have Kat right here. But a key to getting enough calories during a build, especially when you're working a lot and in and out of a lot of meetings, is one, preparation. So I'll have my meals prepped or I'll make something like this in between meetings uh, and have them ready to go, possibly eat them during the meeting. Just making sure to get all my calories in throughout the day. You know how I know that you and Jordan were using the golf cart last? <laughs> Beef Stick. Yoli's new name is actually Beef Stick and Ian's is Slim Jim. Guess how I know you guys were riding the golf cart last. The now the key to building lots of muscle is you don't want to burn too many calories, which is why we got the golf cart. This is the hybrid build golf cart. It is to mitigate the risk of burning too many calories by too many steps. Intentional, deliberate, and strategic. You just burp. He just burped and blew it away from the camera. Hurry up, baby. <laughs> Holy shit! We're being swarmed! Oh, yeah. I bet you I bet you I can throw you guys off this thing. <laughs> Holy shit, boss! We're going over! Holy shit! <laughs> shit! Oh my god, he's done. Woo! I'm fired up, Ricky Bobby! 116! I'm going fast again! Woo! Woo! Let's go! It doesn't actually take flight. He just does this for his workout. This is for you, Yoli. <laughs> so we're grabbing the deadlift bar, which means heavy deadlifts today. In this next segment of the video, we'll be talking about training volume and why training volume specifically is so important during a build to facilitate muscle growth and strength adaptations. Uh, but today's workout is going to be back and biceps, lots of volume, but the first thing we're gonna do is work up to a three by three. I think I'll probably shoot for 500 pounds for a top set, but we'll work our way up.
Okay, so that was the last set, last warm-up set. We're gonna go to 500 pounds now, 455. Felt fairly easy, so we might go higher than 500 today for a three by three. Felt pretty good. Now you'll see as I train deeper and deeper into this build, I'll be working with heavier weights and I will be increasing the amount of total training volume with more sets and more reps. If you wanna gain size, you wanna gain strength, you need to be utilizing progressive overload in terms of total training volume. Number two, for set number three, we're gonna go to do 520 for a set of set of three. Uh. 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 Woo! Okay, three by three is done. The way I always wrap up a, uh, a deadlift session is I'll drop the weight. So I have 405 on the bar right now. I'm doing an AMRAP, as many reps as possible. reps. Woo! I felt good. Don't touch the ball, it's over. Call it close, but we all know what this is gonna be. You came to fail the test, you met the best. Expect the chest, but got Monopoly. I came and bought you out, I knocked you out, I cropped you out with no apologies I am the hope, the heart, the faith, the spark, the one who will fulfill the prophecy I just been counting, never lounging, climbing up mountains, bouncing back Step in the ring of us, just step back, damn long hot when I get on the track I like it louder than most, watching all these shit just by down to the goat If I can't decide, I'ma probably get both, we gon' celebrate, but right now I'm a toast, resurrect the ghost Outside, outside, looking at the stars Alright, back is dead Biceps are absolutely smoked. That wraps up the workout. Making some dinner right now. So what we got going on is some pork chops and some sweet potatoes on the Traeger. Now one of my favorite ways to make sweet potatoes is I will throw them in the microwave for five to seven minutes. Before I do that, I'll poke some holes in them so they don't explode all over the microwave. That has happened to me a few times in my life and it is a mess and then I will wrap them in tin foil and either put them on the Traeger or in the oven and then I'll leave them on there for 20 to 25 minutes and then when you pull them out and you unravel the tin foil it is just like cooked the whole way through they're like oozing out of the holes where you poked in with a knife they're perfect it's my favorite way to make a sweet potato so we'll wrap these up go inside eat some dinner So here's what we got going on tonight. We have some fresh bread that Steph picked up at a 
farmer's market, as well as actually the pork chops were picked up at a farmer's market as well from a local ranch. I'll probably have one and a half pork chops and then a sweet potato with some Kerrygold butter in there. This right here is dinner. Blah, blah, blah. Come on, Charlie. Yeah. So here is my last key to a successful bulk and it's all about meal timing. This is why I don't fast in the morning. This is also why I eat my last meal of the night around 9.30 or 10 p.m. And that's really to get all of my calories in. Now, could I get all of my calories in in two to three massive meals? Yes, I could and yes, you can. But for personal preference, I don't like these massive meals because one, they make me feel a little tired and lethargic. And two, I just feel uncomfortable eating that much food at once. So I personally like to spread my meals out. And right now it's five meals a day, every like two and a half to three and a half hours, like anywhere between that range. And my first meal is at 7 a.m. And then my last meal is at, like I said, 9.30, 10 p.m. ish and that's my personal preference it makes me feel really good i look forward to the meals i'm not overly stuffed i can maintain my energy throughout the day and it allows me to get all of my calories and hit my macros in that given feeding period so like for me that's what works maybe for you you can get all your calories in two meals and you feel really good and it works for you but me personally this is why like the main reason i don't fast in the morning and it's also why like my last meal of the night is pretty late. So I hope these, these tips helped you during your build and your bulk to put on size and strength while still running the hybrid build. With that being said, we're going to wrap up this video, which is episode number four of the series. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you guys in the next one.